Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a horror, dark comedy film from 2017, titled Happy Death Day. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The campus clock chimes 9. Tree wakes up in a dorm room that's not hers. Carter turns around and greets her, then her phone rings to the sound of a birthday song. She asks where her clothes are and immediately stands up to get dressed. Tree asks for Tylenol and Crater scrambles to find it. When she's done dressing, he gives her the bottle of pills, still trying to be nice to her, but she tells him not to say a word about their encounter. As she's about to leave Carter's friend walks in asking him if he slept with her. Tree is disgusted with both of them. She walks outside and a goth is checking her out, then a girl asks her to sign a petition to stop global warming, the sprinkles come on chasing off a kissing couple, a car alarm blares, a frat guy is torturing a few rushes and one collapses as she passes by them. Suddenly, she's stopped by Tim, her supposed stalker, a guy she had one date with and doesn't like. She makes fun of him, then leaves. She walks up to her sorority house and a girl greets her. Tree sneaks inside, but is immediately caught by Danielle, who reminds her about the house meeting at lunch. She walks inside her bedroom and is greeted by her roommate Lori, as she drops on her bed. As Lori recounts the previous night partying, Tree suddenly sees the time, realizing she's late for class. She jumps out of bed, rushing to get dressed and find her books. She turns around and Lori gives her a birthday cupcake, telling her that she can't hide her birthday from her. Tree blows out the candle and drops the cupcake in the trash as she walks out. Lori is angry. Tree walks into a class, held by a professor she has something going on with. That day, she has lunch with her sorority sisters, as one of them, Becky sits down with a high-carb lunch, deemed bad by Danielle. They make her leave because of it, but when she stands up, Carter walks into her, spilling a chocolate shake all over Tree. She doesn't want her sorority sisters to know she knows him and pulls him to the side. He gives her back the bracelet that she forgot at his room. Later, she goes into a hospital and declines a call with her dad, then walks into Lori. She knows why Tree is there and tells her that what she's doing can have serious consequences. Tree walks into an office and the professor walks inside. She instantly starts kissing him, but suddenly his wife knocks on the door. That night, she's in her room and Danielle comes in, wearing her top. They talk about the party they're going to later, when there's a power shortage. Tree is listening to her dad's message as she walks by some jocks, going toward the party. She walks into a creepy underpass, where a music box is playing happy birthday. Tree thinks someone is joking with her, but there's a noise behind her. There's someone in a college mascot mask, staring at her without saying anything. He disappears. She passes through the underpass, when he suddenly jumps out with a knife and starts chasing her. Tree stumbles and falls. He grabs her and kills her. Tree wakes up in the same dorm room. Things start playing out the same way as before. She dresses, as Carter talks to her and she asks for Tylenol, even telling him where he keeps it. He says it's like she's been there before. Carter's friend walks in and Tree is confused. She leaves and when she exits the building, she passes by the same goth, the petition girl, the sprinklers, the car alarm and the frat guys. She looks confused as she runs into Tim again, but this time she asks him what day it is. It's Monday the 18th. Tree is greeted by the same girl in front of her sorority and runs into Danielle, who reminds her of the sorority lunch. Lori greets her in the same way as before when she enters the room. Tree feels weird, but sees she's late for class and hurries. Lori gives her the cupcake, but she gets more confused and rushes out. Later, she's at lunch, when the same scenario with Becky plays out. Tree tries to warn her about Carter, but they still run into each other. Carter walks away, but she reminds him to give her the bracelet back. Later, she's in the professor's office, wanting to talk to him, but he kisses her and his wife knocks on the door. That night, she's watching a birthday video of her and her mom, when Danielle walks in. Tree is freaked out about the blackout. She walks down the same road going toward the underpass, but when she gets there and hears the music box, she takes another way to the party. Tree reaches the house and it looks empty. It's locked, so she bangs on the door. A guy in the mascot mask opens and she punches him, when the lights come on for her birthday surprise. The guy under the mask was Nick. Later, Danielle and Tree are talking and Nick approaches them, flirting with her to the dismay of Danielle. Regardless, she follows him to his room. When she walks inside, the room looks empty. She checks herself out in the mirror, when Nick shows up behind her again and she takes off his mask. He begins playing loud music and dances to it badly, so Tree is unimpressed. She texts with Danielle, as another man wearing the mask walks into the room and kills Nick. Tree can't hear anything over the loud music and when she turns around she thinks the man is Nick. 
She walks toward him and he takes out the knife. They struggle on the bed and a frat boy walks in, but doesn't react to what's happening. The masked man stabs her. Tree wakes up in the dorm room, screaming and scaring Carter. She dresses in a panic and runs out, as everything keeps playing out the same, goth, petition girl, sprinklers, car alarm, frat guys and eventually Tim. Lori greets her the same way when she enters their room and sits down on the bed. Tree tells Lori that she feels like she's losing her mind and tries to explain to her that she's lived through the same day twice as proof, she mentions the cupcake and the surprise party. Lori doesn't believe her story. Tree tells her that somebody will kill her that night and starts panicking, scaring Lori too. But, she tells her to get some rest, considering the day is stressful for her because of her mom. Later, Tree is seen reinforcing her windows and pushing a drawer in front of her door. She sees a picture of her and her mom, when suddenly Danielle knocks on her door and there's a power shortage. Tree sits on her bed and goes to eat the cupcake, when she starts looking for the remote. She finds a birthday card and the TV suddenly goes off, then on again showing the news briefly, then off again. She hears a noise in the closet and grabs a hammer, but when she opens it, no one's there. She goes to check the bathroom, but before she can check behind the shower curtain, the TV comes on again. The masked man appears behind her and after a brief struggle, kills her, again. Tree wakes up screaming in the dorm room, scaring Carter. She freaks out and runs off. Everything is the same again, goth, petition girl, sprinklers, car alarm, frat guys. She starts spiraling into panic, when suddenly Carter stops her to give her her stuff back. She hugs him and asks him to help her. Next, they're sitting in the college cantina and Carter is trying to wrap his head around what's been happening to her. Her phone rings and he realizes it's her birthday. He tells her that whoever's killing her knows it's her birthday and starts making a list with whomever would have motive for that. He also tells her that they didn't sleep together the previous night. They continue talking about her murderer and he tells her that she has an unlimited amount of time to figure out who's killing her. That night, Tree makes a suspect list and the first one on it is Tim. She peeps through his window and realizes that he's actually gay. Tree turns around and the masked man stabs her. Tree wakes up in Carter's dorm room and throws her phone in the trash. Next, she's seen coloring and cutting her hair and later she adds another name to the list, the professor's wife. She stalks her from the bushes, but when she turns around, the masked man tackles her and kills her. She wakes up. The next name on her list is Danielle. They're seen talking, then fighting, when a bus hits them. She wakes up angry, crosses Danielle of the list and the next one is the professor. Tree walks out of the dorm room naked, all the people she saw before her ogling her. Later, she's waiting for her killer with a baseball bat, but knocks Becky out by mistake. When she goes to help her, the masked man shows up and hits her with a bat. She wakes up in Carter's dorm telling him his plan sucked. She's getting weird pains in her abdomen and as Carter's friend opens the door she faints in his arms. Later, she's in a hospital and Carter walks inside her room. He tells her it's Monday the 18th and the power shortage happens. Suddenly, the professor is standing next to Carter. He tells him to leave. The professor, who's also her doctor, shows her an x-ray of her lungs. She has so many lesions on them, that she should be dead. Tree wants to leave, but he tells her that she's safe there. She asks him for a soda to get him out of the room and when he gets back she's no longer there. Tree runs through the hospital and goes into the professor's office, looking for his car keys. Suddenly, she finds a mask inside a drawer. She thinks he's the killer, so she carefully walks through the hospital, when he shows up behind her and is instantly stabbed by the masked man. He goes after her and chases her to the parking lot. Tree keeps hiding from him there, but when she opens the professor's car he hears her and catches up to her. She escapes him for the first time and rejoices, when a cop car signals her to stop. The cop comes over her car and she tries to explain what's happening, but realizes that if the cop thinks she's under the influence of any illegal substance he'll have to arrest her and take her to jail, where she should be safe. So she lies to him and he arrests her. He places her safely in the back of his patrol, but suddenly gets hit by another car. The masked man walks out of the other car and comes over to the patrol. Tree taunts him for a moment, but he walks off and gets back in the car. He opens a window and drops a birthday candle, lighting the gasoline trail to the cop car. Tree wakes up in the dorm again, takes Tylen all by herself, opens the door for Carter's friend and sends him away. She's getting dressed and Carter asks her why she was screaming in her sleep. He follows her out, wanting to know her story. She tells him that she's relieving the same day and tells him about the sprinklers, the car alarm and the frat guy fainting. Later, they're seen in a diner eating. She burps and farts, saying he won't remember it. Her phone rings and he asks why she doesn't pick up when her father is calling. 
She tells him that her mother died three years ago and that they shared the same birthday. Tree is convinced that if her mom was still alive, she wouldn't have been very proud of her, because she's not a good person. He tells her that her current situation makes it easier for her to become a better person, but she doesn't think she has many more days left, because she keeps getting weaker every time she comes back. Tree's attention gets shifted to the news. There's a report about a serial killer that's in the hospital. She thinks that he's her killer. She arrives at the hospital where he's kept and tells the nurse to call the police because he'll escape. When she doesn't see an officer in front of his door, she grabs an axe and walks inside his room. The masked man is inside too, but she doesn't see him immediately. She sees the guard dead on the floor, when the masked man shoots at her. Tree escapes, but he kills the nurse and chases after her. When he catches up to her, he takes off his mask to reveal the serial killer. He raises his gun to shoot, but suddenly Crater jumps him. Tree gets the gun and wants to shoot him, when it jams and the serial killer breaks Carter's neck. He chases Tree again and they reach the bell tower. She appears behind him and hits him over the head, though she suddenly realizes that if she kills him and doesn't reset the day Carter will be dead forever. So, she drops the crowbar and runs again. The killer goes after her, but she kills herself instead. The campus clock chimes 9. Tree wakes up in Carter's room and hugs him, thanking him for saving her life. Before she leaves, she grabs his pillow, spanks his friend for being a misogynist and walks out of the building happy. She sees the goth and takes his glasses, signs the petition, tells the couple about the sprinkles and puts a pillow on the ground before the frat boy falls down. Tree is happy to see Tim and empowers him to get out of the closet. She finally greets the girl in front of her sorority house and walks inside. Danielle walks up to her and she tells her about Carter, leaving her speechless. She walks into her bedroom and apologizes to Lori for being selfish. Next, she goes to class and calls the professor out for a word. Tree puts an end to their relationship, dropping his class too. During the sorority lunch, Tree isn't there and Becky sits down with her bad lunch. Tree arrives and sits down next to her with a tray of junk food, shoving it in her face. Danielle insults Becky, so Tree walks over to her and spills the chocolate shake all over her head. Suddenly, Carter shows up to give her the bracelet and she kisses him, then asks him out on a date. He says yes. Later, she shows up at the restaurant where her dad is waiting for her to have a birthday lunch together. Tree wants them to be open about her mom's death and talk about her more, because she wants to stop avoiding what happened. She apologizes for hurting him by doing that. That night, she gets prepared to face her killer. She goes to the hospital and takes the guard's gun. Holding him at gunpoint she tells the guard to get help because the serial killer will escape. Tree goes over to the sleeping prisoner, seeing that he's restrained, telling him to open his eyes. She wants to shoot, but the safety on the gun is on. He hits her with his pillow, grabs her and takes her knife. They fight, but he's stronger. He gets the knife to kill her, but the alarm on her watch rings. The power goes out and she's behind him with a gun. Tree shoots her killer dead. That night, she lights the birthday candle on her cupcake, while her and Carter talk about what happened. Before she blows out the candle, she wishes for tomorrow. The campus clock chimes 9. Tree wakes up in Carter's room. It's the same day again. She freaks out and runs away. She bursts into her bedroom and starts packing. Lori stands up and goes to give her the cupcake, when Tree has an epiphany. She realizes that she woke up the same day because she died in her sleep. Tree thinks Lori killed her by poisoning the cupcake. But when Tree kept not eating the cupcake, Lori used the serial killer as an opportunity to kill her and get away with it. It was always Lori that killed her. Tree tells her to eat the cupcake and prove that it wasn't her or she'll take it to the police. Lori knocks her down and locks the room. She tells her the reason for wanting to kill her was the professor, because she was in love with him. They start fighting around the room and Lori almost kills her, when she gets distracted long enough for Tree to shove the cupcake in her mouth and then push her out of the window, falling in front of the girl facing the sorority house. Tree and Carter are watching the news in the diner. Her dad calls and she picks up to calm him down. The two of them talk and Carter starts telling her about Groundhog Day which she's never seen. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.